Can you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Roll call, please. Council Member Bush. Here. Campbell. Here. Clay. Here. Latander. Here. Levesque. Here. Motola. Here. Nieves Matias. Here. O'Connell. Here. Rogers. Here. Tedford. Here. Wendis. Here. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Thank you so much. Is there anybody here for Citizens Forum? Yes, oh, there he is. <laughs> how you doing today, Mayor? I'm good. How you doing? I'm all right. My name is Gennaro Gonzalez. I live on 133 West Main Street. Y'all know where I live at anyways. So I want to talk about a few things today. Not to get nobody upset or mad. Just want to tell you what the public is talking about. They're really mad at you, Mayor. They're talking a lot of shit about you. Just keeping it 100%. I think you know this already. Okay? They talk to me at the store. They tell me, I don't think that you're a bad guy at all. I think you're an all right guy. I don't ever seen you done nothing wrong in my eyes. Um, but these people know you a lot longer than I do. I can tell you that. Okay? You know, and other things. What are we doing to help our public so they can like the Republicans a little more? <laughs> okay? Because I resigned from the GOP. I did. It was, it was just, I hear. Por favor, siéntate en el piso. I hear it a lot. I don't like hearing it. It bothers me a lot. But I hate it. You know? So, you know, I resigned. I didn't want to, a lot of people told me to stay to run. I just gave up on it. I really did. I gave up on it. When I seen the board didn't call me back or anything, I just gave up. But the people told me to go, it wasn't up to the board. They, should, they told me that I should have submitted my own paperwork to the Secretary of State and did my own thing with, before the certain date that it's supposed to be. I think it was the ninth. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and um, I don't know, I just got a little bit nervous on a little certain situations and stuff like that. I just don't know too much. A lot of the questions that the GOP asked me, I really didn't know. I wanted to say, yeah, I want to go in this and go in that. I only know about being here at the town council. I don't know too much about other things. Janera, where are you at? <laughs> Can't wait for 18. <laughs> uh, one other thing, did you see C-SPAN? How the White House, they found a brick of cocaine inside the White House? How they were questioning the Secretary of State? I mean, not the, Secret, the Secret Service, no? Yeah. You heard about Fauci and them, that they're under fire right now because they didn't have no, no permission to, to receive those grants that give out the COVID shots on C-SPAN? No? It's a lot. It's a lot of stuff coming out. They're saying that they violated the Constitution. You know, that they, they, did stiff, they did stuff wrong to the public, that the public don't trust the government no more, that the government is really not doing anything for the people anymore. They're doing it for themselves. They believe that they're working among each other and not with the public. Um, Hawaii, they got burned down by our own jet, our own laser beamer, and that's the truth. Hawaii is not a state of America. It never has been, never was, and it never will be because I know for a fact that our own military wouldn't do that to our own state. And I just seen in their own constitution stating that America is not part, that um, they're not part of America. I don't know if y'all knew that. And also, um, what is it, 119 or, yeah, 119 or 112 public act, I, f I forgot it. I usually bring my books, but I got the kids stating that all the public's debt is paid by the United States. Because they are, they basically, it's paid. Everything is paid. All you have to do is use certain, oh man, I should have brought it. I didn't have time. But certain codes, USC codes, 
that's, and I read it last night. I just, it was just so much of it, 64 pages. And it states that our debt is paid, is already paid forward ahead. And I didn't know that, that our, you only have to state certain things to the, these people like Eversource or whatever, telling them the codes and they have to follow the codes. Because they already got paid through our SSI. They're just getting paid more on top, which is a little crazy, you know? The more I keep finding out stuff, what else, what else, what else? Damn, man, I had so much. Oh, California just approved human meat to be sold on the market. They're copying DNA meat and they're patenting a 3D patent machine and they're selling it. So don't go eat Burger King and Wendy's and McDonald's this week coming up because you don't know what it's going to be. Bill Gates' bill was approved. 3D printing on chicken, beef that is going to be sold on the market. You know, so be careful with that. They're going to put all that. They're going to put the vaccines and all the fruits and vegetables. They're going to sink it into its DNA. Be mindful. Don't forget that. Okay. But I'm going to let y'all go with that. Next time I'll come equip a mayor. I can't tell you what the people say, but I like you. So I don't really care what they say. And I want to send out a shout out to Lieutenant Mora. All right. That's my man. Okay. Right. Mike. Thank you. Hope you feel better, my friend. All right. Is there anybody else for? Come on up. Just your name and address. Good evening. Let's see here. How's that? There we go. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council Members, my name is Dan Hayden. I'm the president of the New England Civil War Museum. Your your neighbors right below us here. Uh, so my uh, address, for all intents and purposes, is 14 Park Place. Um, I just wanted to take the opportunity to, to thank you for all the support that you've given the museum over the past few years, especially the past few years since we've reopened um, after the pandemic. It's, it's really meant a lot as we tried to grow this uh, establishment into something uh, as big as it can be. We got something special down there and we know that. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make this something that uh, Vernon can be could be proud of because, right? you know, if just as a, out of uh, context here, this building uh, where the Grand Army of the Republic met, the, uh, the veterans of Civil War soldiers, it's one of only eight remaining in the United States that's left from what it's uh, originally intended to. And it's actually the only one that we know of with a uh, membership that is still meeting continuously since the original inception. So uh, we're still making history down there. So in particular, um, wanted to thank you for, um, you know, allowing us to, to continue uh, doing what we're doing down there. So just in essence here, we have a extensive collection that were, was owned by the people who actually met here uh, during the, you know, as veterans after the war. Um, they left all of their things here for us to be able to, to tell their story. And, um, one of the things that's really going to help us keep the uh, the integrity of that going forward is the help you've given us for the HVAC system that you approved earlier this this year. As you would imagine, things that are that old are pretty delicate. Um, they're 100, at least 160 years old, and uh, are very sensitive to temperature and uh, humidity fluctuations. So, being able to maintain a pretty steady environment within the museum. It's, it's great for our visitors, but it's really more important for the priceless things that we, we have down there to be able to tell that story. Uh, so just wanted to express my, uh, my thank you to you for continued support. Um, also like to shout out Mr. Percaro here for his uh, man awesome support. Anything that we need, um, I just it's a dream to be able to have the relationship that we do with, with the town. So. Uh, thanks very much, and uh, looking forward. Oh, and uh, not this weekend, but next weekend, we have Living History Day. Um, so we're going to have 30 or 40 reenactors from the Civil War outside uh, to bring in uh, some new people into the, the museum. We've had uh, at least 300 visitors this summer alone. We're going to hit at least 1,000 this year, um, and we just keep planning on making it bigger. So again, thanks very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dan. Anybody else for Citizens Forum? Marian. I'm, I'm here to talk about the um, Greenway volunteers and 
some of the needs I think they need. They do an excellent job and a lot of work for us. Um, from my understanding, most of them are using their own tools, their own weed whackers and tappers, and, and I'm wondering if at some time we could find them maybe another shed. This is a, this a statement, not a question. Okay, sorry. I'm just, well, their needs, because I'm sure my fellow town council members and you as well would support something like that. Um, and also, I've heard um, many inquiries about pickleball courts mm -hmm. and whether we're going to have them and where. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? No? Okay. All right, the executive sessions are going to be moved to the end. We're going to go to presentations. I'd like to start out with the, uh, you know, we lost a former mayor, Tony Muro. Uh, I'd just like to start out with a moment of silence uh, for Tony, if we could. Thank you. Um, as our tradition is, we, we normally plant the tree for, um, you know, when a, when a mayor passes away. And we actually have, a, a, this will be the second tree because we have two that we have to plant. And uh, at this point, we're looking at different locations as to where to put them. Normally, we'd put them on the front lawn, but that space is kind of filled up. So we're looking at uh, probably the dog park at this point. But we'll follow up more uh, later on with that. All right. I'm going to move on to a proclamation uh, for the Daughters of the American Revolution. Oh, okay. I bet you we can grab somebody back there to grab the picture. And let our tradition continue on. <laughs> so this is our annual proclamation for the Daughters of the American Revolution. And I'm going to read the proclamation first. It says, the Mayor Proclamation, whereas the Daughters of the American Revolution petitioned Congress in 1955 to set aside a week every September dedicated to the observance of, of Constitution Week. And whereas on August 2nd, 1956, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed Public Law Number 915, honoring the Daughters of the American Revolution's petition. And whereas this celebration emphasizes the DAR's three important messages, it is all citizens' responsibilities to protect, defend, and preserve the Constitution of the United States. Number two, teaches us to be mindful of the foundation of the American way of life. And finally, number three, encourages the study of historical events. And whereas the Vernon Town Council encourages our citizens to take time in September to reflect upon the freedoms we enjoy each day. Now, therefore, I, Daniel A. Champagne, Mayor, together with the Vernon Town Council, on behalf of the entire town of Vernon, do hereby proclaim the week of September 7th, 2023 through September 23rd, 2023 as Constitution Week in the town of Vernon, and do hereby present this mayor proclamation to the Daughters of the American Revolution, the 19th day of September, 2023. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of the Captain Noah Grant chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, thanks to you and the council for again bringing forth this proclamation, re recognizing this week and this very meaningful document, bringing it to the forefront of our attention. Appreciate it. Thank you. And that is for you. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. All right. A couple other things. Uh, number one, uh, we have a police grant. The town of Vernon Police Department has been awarded a grant for $21,000 which will be approved, uh, which approved by the town council in May of 2023 to fund the purchase of four state-of-the-art eco-friendly electric bikes for the police to use for patrol and community policing. The grant was obtained from the Gary Sinise Foundation 
by Nicole Greco, our project and grant coordinator, working with Police Captain Lucas Gallant. The grant covers 100% of the total purchase cost of the four bikes. Uh, pet CPR, the Town of Vernon's Office of Emergency Management and Risk Management and the Vernon CERT team have par partnered with the Friends of the Saxony, par um, Saxony Dog Park to offer the first time ever free pet CPR and first aid training to the Vernon residents. The training is being held at VCMS and the event is so popular it filled up the first week. The team is exploring more training opportunities for our residents, so stay tuned. A uh, reminder, the Miracle Field ribbon cutting is tomorrow. Please remember to join us tomorrow at the ribbon cutting and grand opening of the Miracle Field located at the rear of Northeast School. The event begins at 4 p.m. and all are welcome. Uh, recent events, the, Vern the Vernon, Fire Department, Par Vernon Fire Department held their annual picnic uh, this past Saturday at Camp Nuhaka. The event was full of fun, food, and activities for the membership and their families. Thank you to all the volunteer uh, uh, fire firefighters for their willingness to protect and serve the residents of the town of Vernon. The 10th anniversary of the RHS Athletic Hall of uh, Fame event. The ceremony, ceremony took place this past Sunday at Rockville High School Auditorium. The class of 2023 included five inductees. Lisa Arch Archenbrenner, class of 88, for volleyball and softball. Carol Hartman, class of 74, as coach for the girls tennis from 1998 to 2022. Jamie Sutherland, the um, fourth. Uh, class of 96 for ice hockey. Uh, Bonnie Tierney, class of 73, badminton, basketball, gymnastics, and softball. And Gre Gre Gregory uh, Wolniak, class of 91, football and basketball. Mr. Wolniak is currently coaching at Rockville High School. The 2823 concert series uh, this summer was not one uh, for outdoor activities with all the rain, but the Parks and Recs Department managed to res reschedule and hold all the concerts as planned. With the last concert, uh, it was raining during the concert. But uh, those young adults did a great job. The concert series has become an annual event that residents look forward to. There was a ribbon cutting at Valvoline and Mr. Sparkle. Mr. Sparkle partnered with Valvoline Oil to open a joint location on Route 83. The Mr. Sparkle was renovated and a new Valvoline oil business was open. The owners are hoping to create a one-stop shopping location for those who travel Route 83. Congratulations to Paul and uh, Michael Ferry on their new uh, venture. Uh, the Vernon Public Schools Job Fair um, is coming Thursday, September 21st, 2023, from 5 to 7 p.m. in the Library Media Center at Rockville High School, 711 Hill Road, Vernon. There are a variety of uh, open positions, including biology teacher, paraeducators, uh, secretary, HVAC technician, school climate specialist, bus drivers, substitutes, and cafeteria workers. Dr. Joseph McCary invites everyone interested to attend. The Vernon Sidewalk Expansion Project. The Town of Vernon is planning an approximately $1.35 million project to enhance the sidewalk network in Vernon by providing connections between existing sections of sidewalk with the goal of increasing pedestrian safety and convenience. The town is anticipating the, um, a local transportation capital improvement program grant from the Department of Transportation that will fund the construction. The grant will be administered by the Capital Region Council of Governments. Enhancing pedestrian safety by expanding sidewalks has been an ongoing effort over the last couple of years. The sec the, this project will add significantly to our sidewalk network and make traveling along busy roads safer and more convenient for our residents. The five locations that have been selected is South Street from Harford Turnpike to Henry Park, uh, Harford Turnpike near VCMS from the Baptist Church property along the front of VCMS continuing to Dart Road, Talkettville Road near Naik Road, two segments of Dobson Road, and Lake Street from Lake Street School to Montauk Drive. A public information meeting will be held on Monday, September 25th, 2023, beginning at 6.30 p.m. in the Town Council Chambers. All are welcome. And that is that. Um, I'm gonna have Michelle come up. She's gonna do a quick update on her department. We're gonna see if we can keep this at about five minutes, but uh, thank you for coming. Okay, there we go. Good evening, everybody. And thank you for the opportunity to prevent to present tonight. Um, so as you all know, Youth Services is a multifaceted department with many moving parts. Um, we're active in the community, 
and highly engaged with our family units. And I just wanted to share with you some of our program and staff updates to expand um, on our monthly report a little bit. So at YSB, we have a really strong staff team, and I'm happy to share some recent additions. We recently um, welcomed Lauren Mears in May as our new Youth Program and Prevention Coordinator. Um, <clears throat> Lauren comes to us with um, some great experience working as a case manager for multidimensional family therapy program and a school-based care coordinator. And we're so happy to have her. She's done a great job connecting with the families in our community. We also um, are happy to announce that Joyce Lynn Gianfrido, um, who was a youth worker in our department, recently got promoted to ISP program assistant. <clears throat> Joyce Lynn started with Park and Rec after school program in 2017 and has been with the YSB. She started with them in 2019, and um, she also serves as a volunteer fire department at the fire department. Um, and we are in the process of replacing her position um, because she you know, was promoted. Um, we have one youth worker position still open um, because of a staff member who is in college right now, so moved on to college. But we're doing well for staff. And uh, now to highlight just a few of our summer programs and events. Um, first is the Summer Youth Employment and Learning Program, and I think many of you are familiar with this program already. This past summer, we had 22 youth that participated in this program, and that's nine additional youth from last year, so the program really grew. Um, each participant attended an employability skills training, and then they were placed at a work site where they worked about 20 hours for six weeks at $15 an hour. For many of them, it was their first paycheck. Um, it was also a great opportunity for YSP to collaborate with other businesses in the community and other town departments. So out of the 22 that participated, seven of them, which is 32%, retained their employment after the grant ended. Um, this exceeded the, um, the goal that Capital Workforce Partners, which is the agency that oversees the entire program, has. So they have a goal for us to um, have 20% of our participants retain employment after the grant funds end. And so, so we did really well in this area this year. Overall, this program provided 2,640 hours of work to the town departments and other businesses in the community. Capital Workforce Partners is already in the process of, of putting out their application for next summer, so I will be here next month um, requesting your approval for that application as well. Um, and we had a great summer fun program this year. We um, served 27 elementary age children. They did a variety of activities, swimming. I think one of their favorite trips was the Strong Family Farm where they did a variety of things. They planted seeds, they um, were feeding goats, they did a huge scavenger hunt. Um, they even did like an interactive story time. The kids had puppets and, and they really enjoyed it. We also had a variety of guests. We had um, the Lutz Children's Museum the West Hartford Science Museum, the Yukon Puppet Program. Um, we had Officer Zawadzki and K9 Franco. And of course, we had Gizmo and Gadget with their, their mental health guide. So that was a really great program. The Vernon School Readiness Council, um, through the Vernon Better Together Initiative, also hosted three parent events um, this summer in collaboration with the library. So we had a really great positive turnout for that. Um, Children played, parents got together and talked about um, topics that were important to them, like social emotional health, uh, school anxiety, water safety, those sorts of things. Um, we also held, for the first time, a, a nice summer event at Henry Park. We had over 100 families participate. We, they, we had an ice cream truck, a face painter, um, we had musical entertainment, um, and we got a lot of positive feedback on that as well. Now that um, summer's over, we're up and running with our fall programs, our YSP after school program, our peer advocate program um, at RHS, and we have several things also going on with Vernon Rocks Coalition. Um, this fall, we're doing a community basketball tournament. This is an annual event that we do, community drug take back event on October 28th, and then um, on October 14th, we will support the run Walk for Recovery being held at Rockville High School. That is it for my update. Thank you, Michelle. And I must say, your monthly uh, reports are pretty extensive. I do want to thank you for that. So anybody wants to ask Michelle a question? I just have one. Hi. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Dan. Um, so um, it said you did an internet um, safety program virtual this year. 
So yep. how did that go? Did Through the mayor. Yes, we did. Um, we contracted with um, Scott Driscoll, and he provided that. We worked with the public schools. Um, we, you know, it was virtual, and we thought that would be the most convenient way to engage families. I think we had maybe about 15 to 20 families participate. So if you look at the whole population of parents, it doesn't seem really high, but, but, um, but we were happy to have their participation. So Yeah, especially like nowadays, like even virtual is... Um kind yeah. of wonky. And then your summer meals program? Through the mayor. So actually that program is now under the Vernon Public Schools. So they operate that program. I'm not certain of their numbers. I, I believe they did really well though. Okay, cool. Thank you, sure. Michelle. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Sure. Brian. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Ms. Hill, always good to see you, Michelle. Ms. Hill, sorry. I'm just curious of the uh, people who, kids who worked in the summer program retained their jobs. Who were their employers? Through the mayor, um, so I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to get this completely right, but I believe Walgreens, I believe the Academy of Art and Learning, um, and there one, there might be one other employer that I'm not, I'm not certain of, but I know those two. Great, great, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mike, through you, Mayor. Good evening, Michelle. Um, I want to congratulate you on that. Um, the percentage exceeding uh, what they were asking you to, um, and I know. Uh, I see the kids in Walgreens uh, when I go shopping there and stuff like that, and uh, it's just an awesome program, and I commend you on it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Laura. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. Mrs. Hill, um, I just want to say that I am so thrilled with um, the summer program that you do, and I've heard from uh, the Academy of Arts and Learning how they look so forward to your candidates that come in because it, they are, they're fabulously trained, they do a really good job, and it brings people into a possible career in early childhood education. So having this program really does not only help the kids, it helps our community and businesses as well. All right. Anybody else? Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, Brian, consent. Mr. Mayor, a motion to move the consent agenda is written. Second. Seconded by Laura. Are we pulling any? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Brian, new business number one. Be it resolved that it is in the best interest of the town of Vernon to enter into contracts with the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. In furtherance of this resolution, Mayor Daniel A. Champagne, or duly authorized agent, is authorized to enter into and sign said contracts on behalf of the Vernon Water Pollution Control Authority. The mayor or his designee is further authorized to provide such additional information and execute such other documents as may be required by the state or federal government in connection with said contracts and to execute any amendments, recessions, sorry, rescissions, or revisions. Second. Seconded by Laura. Um, as you can see, the, the amount that the state's going to give us is $248,776.29, which uh, covers most of this. Um, it's pretty important. We're gonna, they, they're going to go through all the pipes and everything, and basically we're going to see what kind of condition everything's in. Is there any questions? <clears throat> Brian? Mr. Grasses isn't here? He's not here. He had an event tonight. Okay, so I uh, have some, when I'm reading this, the things that are bulleted off have been completed, right? And that we've expended that amount of money to do those four things? Yes. Okay, so. Uh, if you go down to the paragraph underneath those four, it says the completed study cost. Um, was complete, the so completed the study cost, for, but it, so. Like we did flow test, because that's where I'm confused, I guess. We did flow testing on 107,000 linear feet, right? Yes. So that's like 21 miles or something like that. So yeah, those guys were the ones that were driving around town and blocking the roads for us. Oh, okay, good. So is there a result, like how did they determine the feet where they were gonna do the flow test and how did they, what was the result? Like what's the whole, I guess what's the, What's the results of everything? Yeah, what's the results and what are we getting to do with it? That's a good question. I don't have the answer. <laughs> Tonight is on the grant. 
accepting the grant. And uh, if I had the answers, I, I would give it to you. I could make a lot of jokes right now, but I'm not going to. So, but uh, yeah, I was watching them as they came down here and, and what they were doing. And a lot of work they were also doing is, is lining the pipes as well after the study to determine which pipes you know, really needed it and extending the life of a lot of our pipes. But um, I'm just happy that the federal government wants to step in and help us pay for this. It's good, yes. I was, that's why I was worried, where is it going? They did the study for 107,000 linear feet and then do we have to replace 107, 53, 12, or We'll so. have Rob stop in at, yeah, at some point. Be good. He, if he was available tonight, um, you know, he would have been here, but he had to cancel. So I'm here to answer your questions and I don't have that answer. You probably don't have <laughs> answers to any of the other. Like this, when the study's completed, does that go to when WPCA it, guys? Yeah, or is it's, it's gonna go admin? to WPCA, but when that study's complete, we're gonna actually have a document. So, you know, Rob can probably, we'll bring Rob in, he can kind of go over it. Yeah. All right. All right. That would be great. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Unanimous. Uh, new business number two. Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to execute any and all documents to apply for and receive the local prevention council grant funds in the amount of $5,342 on behalf of the town of Vernon Youth Services Department. I heard two people. Ariana, was that you? All right, seconded by Ariana. Uh, questions? Michelle, you wanna just give us a, a, what this is gonna be used for real quick? Absolutely. Through the mayor, um, thank you. So this is a this is a grant that we go through every year. It comes from Demas, um, and it's it's used for prevention activities. The focus is still on vaping prevention. So um, this is just you know a, some of the money Vernon Rocks uses to for their prevention efforts. We are planning to use this money to um, provide drug take back events, tobacco compliance checks, and also to disseminate information in the community at different. Um, events in the community, including um, our community block party in the spring, and we also are planning to provide materials at our volleyball lock-in event, which is a substance-free event for youth. Thank you. Julie. Good evening, Michelle. Um, on the vaping, has your perception been that you see the kids decreasing the amount of use, or are they responding or do you see a response that um, they, they have no negative effects, so what's the problem? Through the mayor. So our survey has showed, the student survey that we've done has showed that there has been a, a decrease in Vernon, um, but we're still seeing it in the schools more than, more than we should. So it, it's still happening. Um, I do think that there's awareness out there that it is dangerous more so than initially, um, but we have a lot of work to do, I think. And is, is, are they allowed to vape? in school like you're the mayor no, no definitely not no. The, are, is, how about is, is in their courtyard or outside or, none of that the, no, not a town property so okay so it is not allowed to be done they would have to sneak it or something right mm -hmm. okay but no one has that you're aware of has had any um, substantial bad responses to doing that that the kids are relaying to each other you're the mayor not not that I'm aware of yeah no. okay all right, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Terry. Ah, through you. Um, so, Michelle, on the um, budget narrative here, yeah. so you have that, um, it says uh, total direct charges. Like, what type of um, charges are there? So, I guess. That's... Yeah, through the mayor. So, um, so they're, they're listed. Um, these are charges that were used to provide. Um, some direct service. So, for example, the hidden in plain sight demonstration you might be familiar with, that is something we pay an organization to come out and provide. Um, that shows, you know, ways that students or youth can conceal substances, products they can buy on Amazon. Um, other direct services, you know, for law enforcement. So, um, in order to do our drug take back events um, and tobacco compliance checks, we need law enforcement to assist to provide with those activities, so that's that service. Um, so yeah, together I think that's it for those, for the direct charges. 
And then it says you have um, two community um, take back events. Are they like how often? Yep, through the mayor. So those take back events are nationally, those dates are chosen. They're national drug take back events. There's one always in October and then there's one in April. And where do you usually have? Yep, people? through the mayor. So we usually partner with Walgreens um, right on Union Street to run those and we partner with the Vernon Police Department um, and yeah. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Ryan, number three. Mr. Mayor, the town council hereby authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to execute any and all documents to apply for and receive the 2024 Highway Safety Drug Recognition Instructor Support Grant through the Connecticut Department of Transportation in the amount of $31,848.36 on behalf of the Vernon Police Department. Second. Seconded by Mary Ann. All right, so this grant is gonna provide a DRE, a drug recognition expert, or I think two, correct, Chief? How's that? All right. Yep. So we have two drug recognition experts. One of them is an actual uh, DRE trainer. And what this reimbursement grant allows us to do is uh, when he is assigned to train other uh, prospective drug recognition, get further training for our people, um, and, and generally increase the level of training for all police officers in this critical task, we're, we're able to get reimbursed from the state for those for either um, the cost of the training or the, the overtime or pay that's required to attend these trainings. Okay, so in, this is for the instructor? Correct. All right, and, and how many people can we get trained for this amount of money? Well, the, the state kind of determines how many DREs we can put in each municipality. And I think right now their focus is, is getting DREs everywhere. Um, we, we were able, we were very fortunate through you, uh, the mayor, to get into this program early on. Um, so right now, uh, Officer Zawatsky is our instructor for DRE, and, and he is working with the state and other agencies to get more people trained. Okay. But how many, for this amount of money, how many more can we get trained for the Vernon Police Department? Uh, I, I don't, through you, I don't, I don't have the answer for that. Um, the uh, the classes are are, are are highly selective, and uh, like I said, right now I think the the goal of the state is to get trained DREs every, you know, in all the municipalities and state police troops. Okay. Okay. Unless you do, are you aware of? Uh... It's a reimbursement grant, so we don't get the money up front. It's to reimburse salary for his instruction. So. Mm -hmm. Um, and as the chief mentioned, um, it's a selective process through the Department of Transportation. You actually have to apply, and then they select the candidates. So we do have two DREs in the department, which is actually right. more than most. Um, but this is to supplement his um, training costs. So it's 100% reimbursement for our, any, any DRE-related uh, training or um, event that he hosts. Okay. So I know we talked about... I think last year about sending two to New York, um, and it was about thirty-three thousand. Correct. That's uh, through the the thirty-three thousand for the entire program. No, we were sending. We, we we're looking at sending two people out of from here to New York to do training, and it was about thirty-three thousand. I don't. I don't remember the exact number, but that that it, it's it's expensive. That the training is expensive. It's out of state. Um, or there is a, a, a portion of it that is conducted out of state, correct? Okay. Any other questions? Julie? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Hello. Um, the training for the drug rec, are they able now to detect uh, the POTS, you know, whether they're under the influence of pot yet or? Through the mayor. So. Uh, yes, that is part of the why this program is so important because there are, you know, um, 
standardized field sobriety tests for alcohol, which are, you know, certified and approved through the National Highway Institute of Traffic Safety. Um, there are there are no simple standardized field sobriety tests for drugs, um, and there's no breathalyzer for drugs. We do urine urine tests, but the the specialized training that the drug recognition experts get is that there, there are very specific tests and, and things that they can look for, which will clue them into uh, different categories of drugs, whether it be a stimulant, a depressant, things of that nature. Okay, and so it says the goal of the grant increases officer training in the area of the d drug related crashes to decrease the number of crashes. How does the increased training equate to decreasing the number of crashes or injuries? through the mayor. So when these officers have this training and these, these advanced techniques to detect potentially marijuana intoxication or um, you know people operating under the influence of marijuana, uh, with that specialized training, with that experience, with that knowledge, when they do make that traffic stop, there's things that they're looking for and there's things that they can test that, that will help develop probable cause to actually make an arrest for operating under the influence of a particular drug. Mike. Through you, Mayor. Good evening, Chief. Good evening. Um, I guess with the legalization of marijuana, um, and there's no standard test to um, prove if you're on it other than, like you said, like a urine test. Um, so I guess beefing up how many people are certified to um, acknowledge this uh, with the training. Will you make sure that there's like one officer on each shift on staff? Because if somebody, if an officer pulls someone over and suspects, or it's a Chi Chi and Chong event when they roll the windows down and, poof, you know, um, would they have to call that officer over and uh, do the actual um, investigation there and all that stuff to see if they feel that they're under the influence? Yes, through the mayor. So we work collaboratively with, with all the regional police departments, the state police as well. So if we don't have a DRE that's working, we'll make that request and uh, say if uh, Manchester or South Windsor State Police have a, they have a drug recognition expert, they'll, they'll come to us and we do the same thing for them. Could we see this down the road being a budget problem for us with trying to uh, curb this and certify more people above and beyond what the state's willing to help us with? Uh, through the mayor, I, I, don't, th I don't believe so. Um, uh, it, this training too, I, I think is important at, at this level, it's, this isn't something that's going to be like a recruit level training, uh, cause it is so it's, it's, it's specialized and, and the, uh, the amount of training and effort that has to go into this, I don't, I don't think you're going to see like, you know, this, um, you know, hundred percent of law enforcement in Connecticut trained to this level. Um, so I, I, I don't think it'll be a funding issue. I'm not concerned about that. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Marianne. How many other towns, local towns, have the same type of training or officers that have this? Uh, through the mayor. I, I don't know how many specifically, like, like Manchester, South Windsor, the state police have these drug recognition experts, but... Um, the goal is is to try to get at least one or two of these experts in every department, every state police troop, so that they are available, almost like a, a regional asset, so similar to like um, like our canine program. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And just so everybody understands, this isn't a simple test. This takes the officer off the road for what, chief, a half hour to an hour? Two hours. Two hours. Two hours. So when you know we have to loan somebody out, we lose that officer on patrol for two hours. This is why it's important that we have more in each town. Um, and to be honest, when they were trying to pass that marijuana bill, that's one of the things I wanted some of the funding to go to, so that you know the departments could deal with this on a regular basis, and we're not losing out. And um, you know that's why we, I wanted to send more guys off to the training because you only have two. It's much you know. We could get four or six, that'd be an even better number. I know it's a lot of money, but you know what, in, in the end, at two hours a clip, 
it's well worth it. Anybody else? Laura. Yes, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Um, seeing this is such an important um, part of their job, um, have we considered making one of those GRE officers uh, to get them trained to be able to train other people? And that might help us make sure we have our officers uh, trained and possibly make more of an impact? Yeah, it's, it's more than just having a local officer train because they have a lot of different locations that they have to go to, including out of state. Um, it'd be better if we could do all the training within the state and just have a constant class going on. Chief, you want to add on to that? Uh, through you, Mayor. No, I think, I think how you answer is perfect. It's just, um, I think ultimately we will have more people trained in this. It's, it's just, as of right now, I don't think that's the... The goal, and again, it's it's administered by the state, and it's it's not just a matter of, of me saying I want to send four more officers to this training. It's there 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 are a very limited number of of training slots for this specialty, and uh, certainly when we can, we will send more. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody else? Um, Terry, through you. Hi. Good evening. So how many, how many do we have now in place? Two. Two. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Hey, Brian. Mr. Mayor, the town council waives the reading of the minutes of the regular town council meeting on August 15th, 2023, and that minutes of said meeting be approved. Second. Second by Marianne. Any corrections? Oh, I'm sorry, second by Terry. I was second by Terry. <laughs> she followed it. <laughs> Is there any corrections or deletions? No? All those in favor? Unanimous? All right, Brian, let's go back to... Uh... <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, Town Council, pursuant to the authority given in Connecticut General Statutes 1-206D, hereby moves to go into executive session to discuss contract negotiations Invites Michael J. Picaro, town administrator, to attend. Second by Laura. All those in favor? Unanimous. All right, we'll be back.
I saw Bill's DVP. You guys do a favor while we're doing this. All right, we are back, Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby approves the contract between the Town of Vernon and the Maple Street condominiums as presented and further authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to sign any and all documents for same. Second. Seconded by Laura. Uh, all those in favor? Unanimous, Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby approves the transfer of property from the Town of Vernon to Robert and Cheryl Paquette as presented as part of the Windermere Fields boundary line adjustments and further authorizes Mayor Daniel A. Champagne or his designee to sign any and all documents for same. Second. Oh. Is that you? Seconded by Mary Ann. All right, all those in favor? Unanimous. Brian. Mr. Mayor, the Town Council hereby approves the use of ARPA funds to support the renovation of the Citizens Block in an amount not to exceed $580,800. Second. Terry? Seconded by Terry. All those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Brian? Mr. Mayor, motion to adjourn. Second. <laughs> Ooh, all of us. That was seconded by Ariana. All those in favor? Unanimous. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>